I'm a common person, and I use common sense. If I'm elected, I can walk between both parties. I'm not stuck in the party mode. Rather, it be Republican or Democrat. I care about you and doing the right things, lowering taxes, student debt, jobs, environment. And number one is environment with me. There's a lot of talk out there that um, the corporations and the powers that be don't care about the environment or the people. They are fed by greed. They don't care about you. The parties, I believe, don't care about you. It's about control and power. I care about you. I care about your grandchildren and their right to life. When I'm elected, I will make my voice heard. And I'll do the best that I can for you. For you're the ones that put me in power. You're the ones that put me in the office. And your voice will not go unheard. So vote for me, November 4th. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Where do you stand on copper nickel mining? Can it be done safely? Do you have any confidence in that at all? And uh, uh, Mr. Sandman, this is uh, uh, your big issue. We'll, we'll start with you, sir. No, it <coughs> cannot be done safely. Not at this time, and even though we do not have the science for that. Uh, so I oppose that uh, wholeheartedly because I know what it can do and what it will do. Just uh, about a month ago, a mine up there in British Columbia broke and fi dump dumped five billion gallons of toxic waste into the river. Now it's the same technology that the mining is proposing to make a containment field for that uh, polluted water. But where they're looking at putting that is already in a mine that is already leaking into the watershed. So I don't support that at all. But what I do support is uh, the Northern Lights passenger train. I think my opponents will agree we need to get big money out of Congress. We need to stop um, giving sub -sub 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 the subsidies to the corporations. We need to have the corporations start paying their darn taxes. Now we can redirect some of that funding into northern Minnesota so that we can go on with other projects that are less environmental um, friend, uh, deadly. And we talk about two to three hundred jobs. Northern Lights, they were talking about the other day, 13,800 jobs for the 8th District. That's something to look at. They may be temporarily, but three, four years down the road, maybe something else will happen. We don't need that mine up there. So. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Representative Nolan on uh, precious metals mining, sir. Well, um, first of all, I, I grew up on the <coughs> Iron Range, the Cuyuna Range. Um, mining is a huge part of what we do and, and who we are. Our economy, it's been set up here, is, is based on timber, uh, taconite, tourism. Nobody enjoys the great outdoors more than we do up here. Our water, our forests, our lakes, we treasure them. That's why we live here. But I reject the argument that uh, because something has never been done before safely, that it can't be done. There was never an internal combustion engine. Um, there was never a catalytic converter, or there was never a scrubber on a coal-fired power plant to scrub the sulfur out of them. 
uh, we didn't have the scrubbers to take all the toxic waste out of our lakes and our rivers and, uh, and, uh, and our streams. I submit, I submit that we now have the technology. We now have the brain power. All we have to have is the resolve and the will to do it right. And, um, you know, on your right here, uh, my opponent suggests we should do away with all these EPA regulations and onerous rules. Rules and regulations which, by the way, have cleaned up our air and our water. And in little over one generation, increased life expectancy in America from about 47 to about 90. Maybe one of the greatest achievements in the history uh, of humanity. No, I submit that we must be compliant with good, sound environmental rules and regulations, and we have the technology to move ahead with mining, ferrous and non-ferrous mining. These are minerals that are badly needed. Uh, it's a huge part of our jobs, our economy, our culture, and we need to protect our environment just as well, because that too is a critical, essential part of our economy and our culture. Thank you very much, Mr. Mills. Sounds like there might be some common ground here. Uh, well, uh, not really. Uh, you know what? Um, I'm for it. Uh, you know what? The polymet is, it, it's amazingly well thought out. The science, the engineering is there. After nine years, there's no reason why we shouldn't be going forward with it. Obviously, Mr. Sandman is against it. And we're not quite sure where Representative Nolan is. In the last election cycle, he blasted Jeff Anderson and Representative Kervak for their support of the Strategic Minerals Act and then went and voted for it. Uh, Nathan Ness in the Duluth News Tribune had a scathing guest editorial which outlined Rick Nolan's, Representative Nolan's flip-flops. Uh, also, most recently in September in the Duluth News Tribune, they were talking about how he's hedging his support of Polymet. And the Daily Cost did a scathing editorial complete with a video outlining represent, re, Representative Nolan's flip-flops. So, uh, we can, he can say he's for it right now, uh, but where is he gonna be tomorrow? And you know, it, you can look, at, all this stuff is online. Uh, it's not really a did not, did to, did not, did to. Just go look it up for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one minute, uh, Mr. Sandman, if you'd like. We don't have the science for a cleanup when it happens. Simple as that. I look at what's happening now without the mine being there, we have the metal mercuries that are in the water and the fish are ready. One in 10 babies here in northern Minnesota show a higher elevated uh, elevation of that metal in their blood. Our babies, what will happen when this happens? It's not if, it's when. It's when it happens, we we're the ones that are going to suffer. Our children are the ones that's going to suffer. Your grandchildren. It won't affect us right now. But you go down two generations, it will. And if their record is so great, why are all the accidents happening with this type of mining around the world? It is unsafe because we cannot take care of it when it happens. Thank you. You. Congressman, one minute, please. Well, um, I do support PolyMed. I have always supported PolyMed. I have always supported mining, and I have always supported doing it the right way in compliance with good clean air, water, health, and safety standards. Now, obviously, you take issue with the standards, and you take issue with the mining. My position has been consistent. It has been clear, and you can say that's being on both sides of the issue, and I would say, yeah, you're darn right it is. I am for mining, and I'm for doing it the right way. And with regard to the technology, Minnesota's been a leader in clean water technology. We make some of the best high-pressure pumps through companies like Warner Engineering. We make uh, some of the films that go into reverse osmosis. And with regard to wild rice, I've been picking wild rice all my life. I picked rice this year. Me too. And, yeah, and it, the, the rice where I was wasn't very good either, Skip, but uh, we, we got a few pounds. Um, but you can take, and PolyMed has said, give us your standard. You want 250 parts, 10 parts, zero parts. We'll buy the pump, we'll buy the filtration, and we'll give you whatever standard you feel is important to protect the water and protect the rice. We have the technology, we have the know-how, we just have to have the political will. 
Thank you very much. Mr. Mills. Uh, my rebuttal is simple. Uh, if anybody wants to know the truth about how Rick Nolan's been on each side of the issue mm -hmm. and trying to walk the tightrope and hedge, just go to Google. Just Google it. The information's out there. The debate's over. Thank you, gentlemen. What do you say to critics who, who accuse you of just being a one-issue uh, candidate? Uh, and it's all environment, anti-mining, and, that, and then that's about it. Well, it's a very big issue, and critics will call me a lot of different things. But I look, if we don't have water, we don't have life. When I was a veteran in, in, a, in service, I had to stand up in front of a bunch of people, and I had to raise my hand, and I took that oath to protect this country from foreign and domestic. That means a lot to me, because I was never released from that oath. Therefore, I see what's happening up there and proposed what's going to happen up there on the Iron Range as a direct attack on America. They'll come in, they'll do their uh, processing and extracting, but then when, the, when that's done, they pack up and leave. They don't care about the people, they don't care about the mining, they don't care about the environment. We have, we do not have the science to clean up a spill. If you look at history of that type of mining, throughout the world there's never been a safe one. And for the life of me, I cannot understand how two to five hundred jobs are worth our future. Once that stuff gets into the water, there's no guarantee it'll destroy our tourism, which brings in in northern Minnesota about 200, 200 to 800 million dollars per year. How many jobs will be lost when it leaks? How many? Doesn't matter which party you are, but we have to do the right thing. Both my opponents here uh, say something completely different. Short term. I don't. I look for a long term. We need that here in northern Minnesota. We need someone looking after our children and after our future generations. It may not happen in our time, but 20, 30 years around, down the road, it will.